perhaps BF2 would be the pattern that was desired to be created here. PF2, due to the parentheses in the macro definition, resolves to dog or cat, and it with fish or pie. As with C and C++, uh, the pound sign defined macros, BDL macros definitions should uh, contain parentheses as a precaution so that the order of evaluation is determined by you instead of depending on the precedence of the operators when the macro is invoked. When using VFIND in conjunction with smart scan output from UAD, UAD reports the file type. Now it's possible in a VDL file and in a specific VDL rule to restrict VDLs to apply only to files of a certain type or to not apply to files of certain types. These are the file type restriction directives in a VDL file or VDL rule that starts with a less than sign and ends with a greater than sign and in between there you have the file types in double quotes. You can have a sequence of those separated by commas and to negate a file type expression we use the exclamation point. So when specified as part of an individual VDL the file type restriction applies only for that VDL. When specified outside of a VDL the file type restriction applies from that point on to the rest of the VDL file. To reset, to scan everything with no file type restrictions, simply use the angle brackets with nothing in between them. Here are some examples of using file type restrictions in a VDL file and VDL rules. As VFIND reads the file of VDL definitions. In this case, the first thing it sees is a rule for a VDL named V1. At this point, as it's starting to read the file, there are no file type restrictions of any kind, and all VDLs will be applied to all file types. The second line, the word text in quotes in angle brackets, is a file type restriction directive, meaning from this point on in the file of VDL rules, those rules will only be applied to files that UAD reports as being of type text. So VDLs V2 and V3 will only apply to text files. Then comes exclamation point HTML in angle brackets, which resets the file type restrictions such that the following VDLs will be applied to all files except those which UAD reports as being type HTML. So v, that would apply for V4. V5 shows an example of a file type restriction specified right in the VDL rule itself. We have the VDL name V5 followed by a comma. And then right at the beginning of the definition, you can optionally specify file type restrictions that apply just for that one VDL. So the VDL rule V5 will only be applied to files reported by UAD as being JPEG or GIF files. With V6, the file type restrictions revert back to those specified for the whole file of VDLs, meaning it would be applied to all files except those of type HTML. Finally, the file type restrictions are reset at the next to the last line in the example by using two angle brackets with emptiness between them so that the rule V7 will apply to all file types. It's important to note that for any case where UAD is not able to recognize a file type and reports the file type as unknown, that all VDL rules will be applied in that case. So if UAD makes a mistake or is not able to detect uh, a file, it'll still be scanned by all of your rules. As an extension to the syntax for specifying file type restrictions, CVDL now also contains the ability for you to specify version strings associated with your VDL files and even for individual VDL rules. This can be important in a scenario where you scan files and perhaps create logs of the results. Then as time goes by, you change the rules, may rescan the same files and end up with different results. It can be important for accurate record keeping to keep track of which version of which VDL file and VDL rule was used in particular cases. The example uh, shown here specifies a text restriction for the file v.vdl. 
So all the PDLs in that file will only apply to file types reported by UAD as being of type text. And it also uses the version equals signature to cause VFind to print out the version number of the file. In the VDL file for VDLB, its own version number is specified there, 9.9. .9. That version string applies only to the VDLB. So as VFind reads this file and parses the VDL rules, it detects these version equals uh, uh, strings and will print out the version for the v.vdl file and additionally print out the version string associated with the VDLB. The final topic of this tutorial involves using vfind and its command line options to specify a file of VDL rules. The basic option to tell vfind to read a file of VDLs that you wrote is the dash dash VDL equals option. So you would say, for example, vfind dash dash VDL equals then the name of your file. Note that vfind uses a parallel search engine internally. This means that scanning time is mostly independent of the number of VDLs. Scanning time is proportional to the amount of data being scanned. But if you increase the number of VDL patterns to scan for, so you double that, it does not double the scanning time because the patterns are actually searched in parallel. However, the parallel search engine does not handle case insensitive strings. So those cannot be done in parallel. This means if you have a file of VDL rules containing a lot of case insensitive string matches, that will run very slow. This is a type of problem that occurs, for example, in scanning email for uh, spam and sexual harassment, uh, things like that. Uh, many of the spam and words that you might want to uh, detect can be spelled case insensitively, so you have to match them that way. To alleviate this problem of the slow scanning speed for case insensitive strings, VFI now includes a second separate scanning engine which treats all input data and patterns case insensitively and runs them in parallel. To use this engine, if your file VDL rules mainly contains a lot of case insensitive string matches, simply use the dash dash minus VDLC option. VDLC equals your VDL file where the C in VDLC stands for case insensitive. In this case, all of your VDL rules and the scanned data will be searched in parallel using case insensitive comparisons. If a match is found by the parallel search engine, then the exact VDL that you specified will be run by itself on the data, meaning if part of your rule was case sensitive and part wasn't. When the rule is run after the initial triggering by the parallel search engine, it will either match or not match precisely the way it should. In other words, with the VDLC option for specifying a file of case insensitive VDL rules, it only affects scanning speed. It does not affect the precision of scanning at all. It will not cause more or less false hits, false detections, or missed uh, strings at all. It will just make it run a lot faster if you have a lot of case insensitive string matching. This concludes our tour and tutorial of the CVDL language. I'd like to point out that there are many online resources available for your further study. If you look at Cybersoft's website under the white papers section, there's the original CVDL paper written by Pete Rodati, the president of Cybersoft. There's an additional update to the CVDL language written by me. There's also an online syntax summary which precisely defines the precedence and associativity of the CVDL operators in case you're the programmer type who can understand such a description. We'd also like to point out that uh, many of these newer operators to CVDL have been added due to customer request and due to Pete's request uh, over the past year. We're certainly continuing development of VFind and CVDL as an ongoing project. And if you, after studying this tutorial and learning about all the CVDL operators, find something lacking, where maybe there needs to be a new operator for some specific need that you have, uh, please let us know and we'll do our best to add that to the language 
and continue to enhance me find so it works the best for you and your company. Thank you. Thank you.